I am here today with Daniel McLaughlin, and he is a media specialist with the Cold Lake First Nations. And uh, we're talking about a huge event that is coming up uh, in August, and it's the Treaties 1 to 11 gathering. I know it's a huge, huge gathering, uh, the treaties obviously going from one coast to uh, well into Ontario. Uh, tell me more about it. Well, the uh, Treaty 1 to 11 gathering is kind of an exciting event for us. It's the first time that Cold Lake First Nations has hosted, and it's the first time that Cold Lake First Nations has co-hosted with Beaver Lake Cree Nations. So it's neat because we're collaborating together on this event. So the Treaty 1 to 11 gathering is a place where we can invite everybody across Turtle Island from all of the treaties and even the non-numbered treaties or kind of the modern treaty areas. And we can put everybody in the same room and kind of discuss the issues with treaties that are kind of popping up every day or pre-existing problems or certain things that are kind of uh, impending or a threat to the treaties as they currently stand. So it's it's a really good opportunity for us to bring, like I said, everybody from across the board collectively in one spot. Now, not to put you on the spot, but uh, what are the most pressing issues, I guess, uh, you know, that could possibly uh, affect the treaties uh, in our modern day life right now? Well, as kind of the treaties have been evolving, there's been changes, there's been subtle erosions to the treaties, there's constant legislation that's passed or attempted to pass or that's developed that will change the way the treaties kind of exist. There's a modernization in effect that they want to do. And uh, if you're familiar with any of the white paper 1.0 or 2.0 that's come out, they can be a threat to the way that the treaty is structured. Um, UNDRIP and CANDRIP have also changes the way that the treaties can be enacted or modernized. So all these things continually keep happening. Um, and it, as it sits, treaty nations are, we protect the treaties, we honor and respect, and we try to live that treaty way of life. Um, there's a lot of inherent rights that come along with those treaties that some of those treaties are, aren't very old at all. Some of them are 150 years old, some of them are less than 50 years old. So uh, we want to enshrine and protect those rights. And then we want to work with other treaty nations and understanding what those rights are. So the Treaty 1 to 11 gathering opens the door to all of those numbered treaties because there, there are subtle variances in all those treaties where we can communicate freely with each other. We can share experiences of good or bad things that are happening with those treaties and with those rights and things that have changed or not changed. And we can collectively stand together to help protect those rights moving forward. Is there concern at this time uh, if there is a possible change in government at the federal level uh, that some uh, leaders or parties may not be as uh, supportive of the treaty relationship and could possibly erode it as well? Absolutely. That's a, every what, every every election cycle. That's a concern. As well as the passing of the queen and the new king, those all affect treaty rights. So the king is the other side of that treaty rights holder currently. The federal government, the provincial changes in the provincial government also tends to change the way they view or see treaty rights. Uh, we've had a very positive reaction so far, it seems to be, from current governments, uh, current federal governments. There's been challenges in courts. There's been all kinds of different things that are, are rearing up or changes that they look at making. So, I mean, the situational landscape is always evolving. On the Indigenous side of those treaties, we always seem to be reactive and defensive to those, I think getting everybody collectively on the page and moving forward offensively is a better option things that maybe as we're the other side of that treaty holder we want to see done or how we want to see those rights protected over time is important so it's it's interesting that i think the next election cycle kind of everything's up in the air will they continue to protect those treaty rights will they respect them or will they try to add additional legislation or changes to them so, all right. So outside of the political discussions, uh, what else is uh, going to be uh, you know, talked about or what can people expect that are attending that gathering? Well, the gathering this year is really focused on educating the youth and training the young ones on what treaty rights is. Obviously, there's a giant disconnect when it comes to how youth are recognized treaty versus the elders that have been around for quite a long time. So it's about educating. We're going to bring out all of the youth from the area. We want to teach them what the treaty rights are. We want to get them practicing treaty rights. So traditional hunting, fishing, berry picking, anything that's enshrined in those original treaty rights. We want to expose that to a brand new generation so that moving forward, they can carry that fire forward. So that's actually the theme for this year's event is carrying the fire forward. We want the youth to understand, to learn, and to know what those treaty rights are and be able to teach their next generation of those treaty rights. Because the treaties, they're from time immemorial, they're as long as the grass grows and the river flows. So there's no end date to those treaties. 
So the only thing that's going to end those treaties is people not understanding what those treaties are and not protecting them moving forward. So that's the main focus of our of our event this time. Great, yeah. Having the youth involved and being proud of uh, who they are and what they are and where they're from. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Daniel, uh, those are my only questions for you today. Is there anything that I may have missed that you might want to mention? No, those, those are great. We do appreciate the interview. What we want to do is we want to invite everybody publicly to come. Any treaty members, if you want to come on out, you can go to our webpage, clfns.com, treaty gathering. Registration is also available online through Eventbrite. Just search Treaty 1 to 11 gathering. Um, it can be all taken care of online. You can go and you can send us an email at treaty gathering at clfns.com if you'd like to register manually. We'd like to see everybody right across Turtle Line coming out and joining for a bit. Outside of all the fun stuff that we're doing in the daytime that pertains to treaty rights, we are planning special events throughout the evening. We've got some pretty interesting headliner names that are kind of come out and perform. I can't release any of them yet, but I will be releasing them shortly. So as much as it's a fun conference and we want everybody to learn and take away experiences that they can pass on, there will also be a lot of fun stuff to do in the evenings as well. So we're really looking forward to seeing all the new faces come out. Okay, well, Daniel, thank you so much, and uh, I wish you luck with the event. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful day.